if we look in the Old Testament we will see that every great man of God every prophet that God used if we look at Enoch it says about him before he died God gave a testimony that he pleased God boom God took him we see Joseph a pagan Pharaoh looked at Joseph and said the Spirit of God is in you who can we find just like you but we see Joseph living his life when the temptation came in Joseph nobody was there to watch him he could have easily slip and and simply say it's a man's need to sleep with a woman and Joseph says no 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 if I am to protect the Holy Spirit who gives me supernatural things I'm gonna have to turn my back toward you wife of Potiphar and I'm gonna face the Holy Spirit I'm gonna honor the Holy Spirit and God honored them people like Isaiah, people like Jeremiah, people like Daniel, people like the Daniel's friends, people like David, they all had one thing in common. Not all of these people were educated, not all of these people were rich, not all of these people were famous, but all of these people had one thing in their life that they had in common. They were not for sale, they were sold out. When the world knocked and the world says, can, we give a, can you give me a little bit of you? They said too late, I already gave it to God that's why God used them the Bible says that's why God wasn't ashamed of them and the Bible says the world wasn't worthy of them and that's why God's spirit moved upon them because God's spirit could easily brag about them and say these are my men and I own them let's be those people today to activate the Holy Spirit we have to choose to do the first thing live for the applause of one can somebody say amen are you gonna live for the applause of God are you gonna live to please God if yes say yes with me We're gonna live for God's call. We're gonna live for God's cause and we're gonna live for God's purpose. But the second thing that I want us to point out today, how to activate God's anointing, uh, God's presence in our lives is do good to change the bad you see. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10 that Jesus anointed by the Holy Spirit went around doing good. Went around doing good. The Holy Spirit lays dormant in our lives if after committing our life to God, first of all, realistically speaking, it is impossible to commit your life to God. And I mean truly, without after that, helping other people. It is impossible. When I meet people and they say that I committed my life to God, you may come to church, that is one thing. But when you truly commit your life to God, the one thing that you want to do is you're going to start helping other people. You're gonna want to be a home group leader not because home group leader is cool in a good news church but because home group leader is the way you accomplish your purpose of helping other people to become discipled by Jesus Christ. You will automatically do that but if you don't automatically kick, click in I'm gonna remind you of the scripture. When Jesus was anointed why was he anointed? Because his life was pleasing to God and not only in the beginning of his life but even in the middle of his life when he was famous and when he already was known and thousands of people flocked to his meetings and people stood up there was reputation going on and Jesus goes on the mountain of transfiguration and the father says Jesus is still pleasing to me he didn't get his eyes off of me to success and the ministry he still has his eyes on me that's why Jesus was anointed he pleased his dad he pleased God. If we choose to please God even when things get good or hard and we stick through it, God's anointing will rest upon our church. When right now we have more people coming, more leaders rising up, if we keep it in front of our face, the main thing, the main thing, which is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, God's vindication will rest upon our life and God's anointing will not lift from our life. 